Hello and welcome back to a new episode here on Define Craft. Hope you are enjoying the series and obviously as I said in previous episodes I will be showing you guys um, some new skyscrapers we built and surprisingly enough we have built this one that is right behind us. Yes indeed we have literally done that and it took so long and I mean so long. I will show you where we got all this black stone from eventually in this build but first of all I want to make sure that you guys are subscribed make sure you leave a like and a comment for this video because why not and yeah let's pretty much have a little exploration and uh, let's show you guys what this build is about so just to recap this build is a real life build it's based from New York and if I'm not correctly mistaken it should be on 57th or 58th Street in New York and um, it's I don't even know what it has inside um, as in like in real life obviously I know what it has inside in in this server but um, yeah pretty much it's it's a normal build I guess it's a little bit too dull because that's just you know unfortunately how it is um, I guess another thing I can say is I was personally there uh, when I was younger but yeah that's another story time to say and um, definitely it is a really really nice build and it also is kind of tall which will be overlooking Central Park in New York and uh, that's why I kind of added a little bit more bamboo to kind of give it that feel at the bottom there which you can see but yeah that is pretty much uh, all from what it is based on from real life so just to recap about the structure of this build it is pretty much made out of white concrete and blackstone and believe it or not if I go in here this all of this is glass this is not just pure blackstone this is also fully and I mean fully on each four sides eliminated with this glass and oof I'm falling down so yeah that's pretty much incredible because you barely see the difference but the glass is there indeed which is once again absolutely wonderful and as you can see obviously that just kind of shows that how much I actually care about all these little details because then you could see the connections of the block a little bit more better which I wouldn't really like I would kind of want to have a little bit of a, like a reflection feel to it but obviously there is no mirrors in Minecraft so I can't really do that so I guess at least I kind of did this with glass so I could give it a little bit of a more solemn texture um, and then hopefully make that work I guess and also yes it does have these three support beams that are in real life too I don't know if they're support beams but uh, they're the X's um, as you can see by the picture once again uh, but yeah pretty much it's just as it is in real life but except it's in Minecraft so we should probably head in now should we so this is the entrance um, it's pretty cool it's nothing too extravagant but uh, why did that not close it should have closed and yeah this is just the blackstone wall as you can see this is the main area so the main floor and obviously as you can see by the main uh, focus of this like especially and obviously the other wall too is that there is pumpkins and there is melons so well obviously you can then tell what kind of farm I put in here and we will be showing you that right now but before we obviously added an ender chest because as cup fans said from the hermitcraft server um, every single shop needs an ender chest which is a very important rule but so far we I don't think we have sold any but I don't really care as much about like you know not having a lot of customers because at the end of the day you know it's just have fun and just to you know kind of hang around with some friends and you know just chill and just build some crazy farms and build some crazy things so um so yeah that's pretty cool and obviously how can i forget this map i had to create every single map is actually a locator map by the way and um yeah i just went around and i just uploaded 
are, I guess, renewed, I don't know how to say it, the map in each individual area, so I had to go here physically, and then create a new map in order to get that area, and then obviously I just came back and I placed it all in. Um, but whenever there is a new build that pops up here, um, we will have to go manually and replace it um, so it could update. So if I just covered this area, this patch in, let's just say, white concrete, um, it wouldn't actually show it on the map, but it would obviously be there in real life or in the game, I guess. But um, yeah, it wouldn't show it on the map, so you would have to actually go there physically with this map and, um, you know, renew it. And yeah, pretty much it is coming together. As you can see, I've laid down some more paths. There is some more skyscrapers, or I guess apartment complexes or buildings, whatever you want to call them, popping up, which may or may not be mine. And yeah, there is a bit of river work to do. As you can see, this estuary right here going into the river and into like the tributary area right at the top there. Um, it is pretty cool. Um, maybe we should elongate that one, make it a little bit more wider. But it is pretty cool with this little coastline we've added all around. So I'm really happy that that came out as it did. And I do not want to spoil too much, but me and Vi have been discussing that over here, there might be some boats, there might be some marinas, there might be some something in the future if we do ever run out of space to build here. And also I do want to kind of add a little bit of a hillside here, kind of dividing the desert and the shopping district or the CBD area. Because yeah, if you just have like a plain like desert and this there, it doesn't really, you know, count or it guess it doesn't really look as if it was you know naturally generated uh, generated terrain sorry so um so yeah i kind of want to do that in the close future too but anyways moving on to the main focus of this farm if we go up here this is the collection area so here we got all our excess pumpkins um i think it's right here okay that was a little bit of a fail but who cares and i think there might be either here or there are actually I don't think we have a lot of uh, melons sorry because yeah like I mean this farm produces a lot of melons and pumpkins uh, especially melon slices but um, it got to the point where we had so many melons and pumpkins flowing in that I just unfortunately had to turn it into bone meal and there wasn't another option because uh, no joke the chests there was a uh, two double chests and they would have literally gotten full in like maybe two to three days and obviously i don't have an hour every two to three days to come here just for this to renew them and yeah put them in like craft especially the melon slices into actual melons and like melon blocks so unfortunately i had to actually bone meal them so therefore this is theoretically a bone meal farm, but obviously with a press of a lever, which I'll show you in a second, we can actually just, you know, have melons and pumpkins flow in. But here is all the bone meal. There we go. It's pretty crazy. I know, right? I mean, there's a lot of them here. And this is all, this was all, the, like one stack is multiplied by nine, like bone meal stacks. So this chest, this double chest is basically equivalent to having nine double chests worth of bone meal stacks, literally. So that's how much this produced. And that is an absolutely ridiculously crazy amount. And it's so obscene to see. And obviously here we just have a little bit excess. But um, this is basically a success just because we practically just have infinite white buildable blocks right now and that is very useful for future projects and especially like farming and bone milling stuff as well but especially I'm probably going to use this for bone blocks um, because they're a really nice building block and I really like the texture and the sound obviously. So here we just added some furnaces and then there's some extra excess chests for other materials we might need in case of any creeper explosions or anything along those lines and yeah i mean this also this collection area kind of looks also pretty nice and uh kind of kept it neat so it wouldn't have to be you know everything everywhere and uh yeah let's go up the elevator now 
So going up here, as you can see, we have a lot of levers. And now you may ask yourself, well, why are these here? And why are, like, what are, what's the reason? Why are they here? What are they for? Well, if we go up here, this is basically the melon farm. And it took so long, and I mean so long, to get all this grass, as you can see, and everything. And I mean everything, like all the pumpkins, all the melons, the amount of farming I had to do outside of this in order to get them. And then get all of these and then plant them in, you know, let them grow. It was a hassle, guys. And it was so, so long to build this, but eventually it did get done. And then obviously we had a lot, and I mean a lot of stone to use, a lot of rails, a lot of iron, a lot of redstone. You know for the collection and this is obviously the observer thingy so whenever uh, a melon grows or a pumpkin it observes it and sends a redstone pulse a redstone signal to this piston which then obviously breaks it and then the minecart collects it but uh, from what I see here now is that there is a lot of slices here and the minecart is missing unfortunately so we will have to replace that it does happen occasionally with this farm but that's why we have an iron farm on the server in case anything like that happens and um yeah in regarding the collection area or whatever there is seven of these built on top of each other yes seven and you may ask well why on earth did you build seven and well i think i built like around 16 times the tutorial what the tutorial told me but uh it was once again it's just because the the height of this skyscraper is so obscene that i was like well why would we just build one at the bottom and then just have the rest of the skyscraper empty right so i just decided to full-on go absolutely nuts with this farm and just build seven in a row stacked upon each other and every single one bit of it creating bone meal and drops and just so you guys know this farm produces around 15 to 16 thousand drops an hour no joke an hour so at the end of the day it is pretty crazy and also that is the reason why i told you guys on the start when we were down there in the collection area that why i had to turn it into a bone meal thingy because right here if i go up and i press this lever this will remove this bone uh, not bone mealer but whatever the composter sorry and then it will just let melons go in um so yeah and then obviously we need to kind of re re remodel the hopper in order to go here and then yeah there's there's other things to do where maybe we could just add in like a simple hopper so we could continue on here but as you can see it is producing quite a lot and i am pretty happy with how this turned out so yeah um even though i won't probably be needing that much um as i said pumpkins or melons i will definitely have a lot of bone meal which i will definitely for sure need so that is pretty much this farm done and as i said there is was a ton and i mean once again a ton of resources that were wasted into this but hopefully it will be worth it probably it was like i think three chests just of cobblestone <laughs> in order to create the observers and the pistons and another probably double chest worth of just stone in general the amount of scaffolding amount of black stone the amount of white dye ah, it was absolutely craziness this is basically the AFK platform, so I guess the farm works best if you're just AFKing here and if you're really depressed then you need to have some melons or some pumpkins or some bone meal really quickly. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much the best spot to be in. And then if we go up, this is just the top floor. I tried to make it look like it's like one of those old NYC builds, like New York City builds. And uh, I don't know, like some ventilations, you know, some some uh some of these railings on top you know some of electricity and uh, all these like cool little details that just make this build work and make it work really well and from the top of here by the way it is it looks absolutely amazing like just with all the plants with all the skyscrapers sticking out oh my god it looks absolutely unbelievably real 
and it has to start raining obviously but since we are on the top of the skyscraper and it is raining I guess we could just use our trident right now and that will pretty much wrap things up for this episode guys we have had an unreal time as you may know and I've showed you quite a bit of this skyscraper I have been up to other projects as well but mainly I've been up to this one so we use our trident here maybe a few more times to get right to the top of my BMO or first Canadian place and have another awesome view from here but as I said this will be the end of today's episode so hopefully guys you did enjoy it and once again make sure to leave a like leave a comment subscribe if you want it's totally for free make sure to check out Vide and also Exapulse and yeah I will then see you in the next episode. This is episode 20 already. So we've basically done 20 episodes and the next episode will be 21. So looking forward to that and also looking forward to ye joining me with the experience. So make sure to hit that like button and I will see you guys.